I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Some people have asked me to come out to the east side of the city and show more of the areas that we absolutely never show because they're really far away and they're kind of hidden and you don't really think about it. So today I took the time to head out to the east side of the city and we're attempting to do a little discovery of what's out here. So we're actually gonna be starting the day at the Parque Urbano Forestal Las Poetas uh, in what I believe, and I'm really working hard at this, so I'm gonna turn around because I'm gonna read the sign I'm hoping that this is actually where we are, not what we're next to, but this is the Reparto Juan de Dios Muñoz Reyes. And if that's not where we are, it's close. Google Maps does not list where it is, and I've not found anyone who actually knows where the Reparto and Barrio divisions are in this part of the city. So uh, someone has that information, but I've really struggled to get it with the detail you would want to be able to say where we are. But it gives you a general idea. We're going to show you maps and stuff to get you started, but we're starting in a pretty interesting area, and I think this is going to be a good walk, um, and it's an area I've not been in, like, at all. So this is going to be all new for me as well, so let's get to that walk right after the bus. Over on the east side of the city, we're mostly dealing with uh, a region that is heavily uh, populated by people who are working with or for uh, the Yazaki plant. This is a really large manufacturing facility here in Leon. And, uh, and so this is a, a kind of industrial housing area that is, to the best of my knowledge, relatively recent, the relative could be. But compared to the rest of the city, this is not an area that is an old region. This is an area that has popped up in the last couple decades uh, to deal with the population growth and the, and the need for people to be closer to some of the big industries over here. So uh, we're gonna show driving up here from Guadalupe, uh, we're gonna start from from the new stadium, which I, pretty much everyone is familiar with. We'll, we'll point that out on a map so you know where we are. We're gonna start from the, uh, from the stadium drive up on the bypass until we come to uh, the road leading into this region and up to the park. So we're just gonna come right up to the park that I just showed the sign for. Uh, we're gonna park here, uh, and then I'm gonna take you through the park and we're gonna start our exploration of this area from there. I think that's going to be just really easy. Once you see that, you're going to be like, okay, so this is the east of the bypass. This is a part of the city that people really don't talk about. People don't really think about. Even living in Leon, we tend to forget this is out here. People who live here are often like, I have no idea what's over there. You don't go past the bypass, right? It's just it's just a thing you don't do. But there's actually quite a bit out here. Uh, several new repartos. There's some new uh, residencias have cropped up. There's a few places that some of the people in my show are actually like interested in just a little bit. Um, we've discovered some places that are like, what? What is this? So we're going to do a number of episodes out here. I want to cover a lot of this, but this is all new to me. I'm just taking you for a walk as I discover as well. So I'm going to turn the camera around, take you into the park as soon as we bring up a map and show you exactly where we are so you understand kind of what you're looking at. So, so we're east kind of central and heading kind of east, maybe southeast as we start walking into the park. The park is completely different than other parks I've seen in Leon, so it's, it's a nice change of pace and really surprising to find this out here. So let's flip that camera and uh, get to that walk. All right, we're starting from the head of the park. And we're heading in. Now this is a fairly large park. It is long and narrow which I mostly know from the map. I'm also gonna show, I don't know what it is across the street. There's a large something with a guard house and a beautiful gate across the street. It's probably related to one of the schools, but I don't know. I'll do my best to figure that out at some point. But so the park itself, this is the main park, has all these paths and little like fenced off garden areas and nice benches. Like this is a nice park with a bunch of work done to it. You can see there's trash containers, which is, you know, something people complain about. Oh, we don't see enough trash receptacles in Nicaragua, but these new parks, they do have them. And then look at this walkway here. Like this goes on a long way. Now, obviously the park is built underneath the power cable. So that's a little bit something. Now, I just want to point this out. So uh, this is where I came over and parked. There's a little playground right here. So the park itself doesn't have a playground, but there's one across the street. Obviously that's not kept up the same as the park. And then there's a school right there. Lots of kids on the playground. What is this? All right, so I think the best place to go through is in the middle from looking at the map. However, because it's so sunny, I think it may be better to go down the other side of the park in the shade 
Oh no, well that's gonna end up in shade part way down. I think we're okay, let's give this a try. Now this is about, I'm gonna check the time, but about 9.15 in the morning. I had hoped to come out a little bit earlier, but it took me a little bit to get out of the house as it always does, and I'm sorry for the bloom on the lens. But this is quite pleasant. And there are some people out here. There's just, you know, not a lot, but there's a couple of people on benches, a couple of people walking. There are so many benches. There's every couple all the way down, but these little side paths all have benches too. I mean, this is an unbelievable number of benches. Either they get an insane number of people out here sitting in the park from time to time. And there are, notice there's, there's street lights. So this must be lit up at night. And uh, I think this is some kind of water fountain that's not functional that I just passed. There's a little maintenance hut. I'm guessing that has bathrooms. That's only a guess, but it really looks like it. But either this place is just packed at some time or other, or this is massive overkill for the neighborhood. Now over on the left, we got a little baseball field. And that's easily going to explain why there could be so many benches. If it's like people waiting for a game to start or hanging out while, while there's something going on. But seriously, this is a lot of benches. This is really a nice find in the city though. And, and just to be clear, if you, you know, check the map, this is a relatively densely populated area. Now it, it, the city ends not too far away currently. So if we go too far, the city will just come to a stop and you go into fields. But the part that we're in is still heavy housing in all directions, in front of us, to the right of us, to the left of us, and of course behind. So this is a, this is a true urban park but it gives me the feeling of a park that they're intending to be part of an expanding city. It feels like it's too big for where it sits in the city today. I mean, this is nice. It's great that there's places to come out for a walk like this and be, I mean, you can hear traffic obviously, but, and, and a lot of these little garden areas, you know, this is clearly new. Now on the left, this is unmaintained but a lot of this is maintained or a little bit maintained. These are going to be turning into more mature gardens in time. All right. And that is the length of the official park. Now notice though, in front of us is a mess. <laughs> so that is actually kind of a wild area that looks from a map. Of course, I'm just guessing based on the map, right? So, so don't take this as anything, but my guess is that the intention is that that is going to be a future park zone as the city expands because it connects to the a sports field. So we're gonna head down this direction. And again, sorry for all the sun in the lens. I know it's not the best, but so this area appears to be set aside by the city as a green area which it is, but you know, not what I mean. And uh, we'll eventually connect things. Try to get in the shadows a little bit. You can see there's houses. This is regular city housing blocks that we're walking along. Obviously we're on the edge of the city more or less. So there's a, you get a little bit more space out here, definitely lower cost. Buenas. Hola. And this is quite a large area. If this was all turned into park like we were just in, you can imagine just what an awesome park that would be. Now this is a house, I assume, with a wall like this for sale. And that's a really nice sign that they put up. Like that's a plastic printed sign with a WhatsApp 
QR code for contacting them. Very smart. You can see the wall. I don't know if that's a, that looks like their wall. Still continuing on there. I have no idea what real estate out here would be like. Very, very inexpensive. I guarantee you that. This is, even for Leon, not a popular area. But, but it's not far from things. Like, if it fits your needs, no reason not to be out here. And uh, I'm just going to point out there's some cool shrubbery way down there. Uh, maybe we'll walk past that. And this is the street going into the city. And I don't know if that house is the other side of the one that's for sale. We might as well walk over and look. You can see there's, there's a little bit of traffic going on. But we're off the main road, so the traffic is light. No, no sign on this house, so that must be butting up against the one that's for sale. All right, so I want to show this baseball field here because this appears to be the south or east end of what is meant to be the future park complex. And we got a cute dog in the road. Yeah, you found some shade. And uh, here we have a nice big baseball diamond and the eggs going down the road. Ooh, a little bit of shade. It's not terribly warm this morning, but it's it's a little bit warm in all the sun. And, uh, all right, we've reached the end of this. I'm going to pause for just a second and check the map. Okay, there, was that a slide at one point, but the slide is gone, so now it's just the metal frame? That is weird. Yep, used to be a playground here. Definitely not so much anymore. Okay, I'm going to check the map and decide which direction is going to be the most interesting for our walk. All right, so according to the map, going straight was the most interesting thing. We got some horses out here. It's definitely not super dense. There's some open space out here, unfortunately, some trash, of course, as is to be expected, sadly. But, so according to the map, going straight is the way, and I can go straight, but I feel like the interest of going straight might be on the low side. That is a dirt path. Going through what, exactly? Um, I'm gonna say Google Maps doesn't know what's good. And we're going to turn and go left. Ah. Sometimes Google Maps isn't the most useful tool anywhere, but especially in Nicaragua. It has a tendency to sometimes show what used to be. Sometimes it shows what might have been. Sometimes it shows what it hopes will be. And uh, so, buenas! All right, you can see though this street, a little bit going on. I'm gonna kind of meander over to the right, a little bit more shade. I know it's hard to hear from the microphone because we do so much sound editing to clean up the voice, but it's really quiet out here. One of the yes. Gotta. Kind of cute spot with the big tree here, a lot of shade. What are these? What is this? I like when everyone's out walking and bicycling because there's life, but it's quiet and safe. An empty lot here. This is definitely the area, or an area, where the city is filling in. Oh, looks like a nice place down there at the end. So I seem to be walking a street that divides 
as I say this, like that pink house right there. Not too bad, not too shabby. Nice little entrance. Uh, don't dump your trash. Here's the law. <laughs> and then here's all the trash. Great. Multiple signs about not littering. I appreciate the signs. Definitely modern signs. It's got the law number and everything, but not very effective. All right, this on the right is a small church. Medium church, I guess. This, I'm going to guess, is the construction of a new business. It could be a house. That would be a really big housing lot. I mean, you could put in a... You could do different things. Or maybe it's old. It looks relatively new, though. And then... Oh, on the left is a nice-looking place. This one on the right, hard to see, but it looks like pretty big and pretty nice. Cool designs. So mostly to the left, seems like a little bit more upscale and to the right mostly looks a little bit more poor, not necessarily on the street, but as the streets go off to one side or the other. And we're coming up on I hesitate to say main road, but this must be, oh, this must be the main road that I came in on because the roads kind of go at angles here, which makes it a little bit difficult to navigate. A lot of auto shops down here. All right, this is definitely the main road. Okay, as we look east, you can see we have a, a big pharmacia, the Saba, down there. There's actually a fair amount of life. There's restaurants and stuff. And then as we look west, that's back to the way that we came. The park is down there. And I think you can actually see the stuff in front of where the park was. And you got a little fast food restaurant, a little burger place there on the corner that's closed. And that's got to be a pulperia that you see people standing at. And that's where we came from down there. Really not a bad area. Now, like everywhere we go, the locals, this includes like other countries as well. Everyone always warns of this. This is a big pulperia, by the way. I'm just going to show that. Everybody warns about the dangers of every neighborhood. Oh, no, this is safe, but that neighborhood. Or this is safe, or this is dangerous. You have to go somewhere else to be safe. So, of course, I've gotten all those same warnings about here, but there's an awful lot of people comfortably walking around on the street. Hard to believe this is a dangerous area. Doesn't feel that way. All right. This is a place that does churros, which are not that common here. I'm not saying you never find them, but finding a churro place isn't super common. Now, this one, Poppy Churro, is one we've known about for a while, but it used to have a stand somewhere downtown, and apparently now it's got a shop out here. So they do filled with dulce de leche, uh, guayaba, piña, chocolate, strawberry, and pastry cream. And they cost, it looks like about 30 quarter bucks, so a little bit under a dollar. I don't know how many you get, but that's pretty cool. There is a churro place in a cute little house out here. Now, this is always a mark of an up and coming neighborhood. They have a Super Express. And uh, when you live in Nicaragua, Super Express or AM, PM, getting one of those is a really big deal because it means your community has enough to survive on its own. And you can see as we look north, the roads get kind of rough. Now, I know this area a little bit, and I mean, like, coming to it one time, uh, because a friend of mine who does our, there's the pharmacy, so you can see, but this is a really big deal, we're going to talk about that in a second, but a friend of mine who does our empanadas, when I talk about our empanadas girl, she lives out here in this neighborhood, so we were out here for a birthday party at her place, which will show a few scenes of when we get some moments between things, uh, when I'm just walking on the street, so you can kind of see what some life looks like out here. But, uh, so the Super Express, the pharmacy, some of these, like this is a little row of shops. This is like a little tiny shopping center. This is super nice, actually. Like really, really nice. There's no parking, you're expected to walk up, but look how many places, the dog food place we're coming up on. Hopefully the sun glare isn't so bad that you can't see it. 
Buenos dias. And then we have a small restaurant that's not currently open, but it's probably just like not currently open, like it's too early in the day kind of thing. And then we got a dusty little road and then a little, I'm going to guess, motorcycle part shop. Maybe it's a bicycle part shop, hard to say. And then this sort of park thing, I don't, I don't know. There was once upon a time, this was a park thing. Now it's a mess, but that would not take a lot. A little community project to clean that up. You could have something anyway. So my point was having, wait for this truck to go by. Having a good solid large pharmacy and a super express or an AMPM as an anchor business in your community means that you've got basic grocery supplies, basic everything. Yeah, sure, you're still gonna go into the city for the big markets for the grocery store, but you don't need to go in all the time. Most of the day-to-day -day stuff can be handled right here in the community. You can see lots of little pulperias with drinks and snacks, barber shops. Like there's, along this road, every little thing you might need for normal community life. Little places to eat all over. This is the Comodoro Milagro, the miracle eatery. I get. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of life along here. And then on the other side, you can see this is a school complex. This is like a, I guess, elementary school. And uh, I'm actually gonna bop over there because there is a solid sidewalk and some shade. And then you can see, then you can see all the businesses along the other side. So again, here's a Commodore Thelma. There's a, a larger restaurant there. Oh, oh, everyone say, oh, ha, 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 buenos dias. <laughs> okay. Oh, ha. Not very often that you get vloggers coming through this area. Okay, so you can look back and you can see there are some businesses as you go back, even in the side roads. I know they don't look like the busiest things, but just because they're dirt roads here, not a big deal. This house on the corner actually looks like it's pretty cute. And then a lot more shops as you come along here. These are, this is a super healthy neighborhood development. So I know to North American perspectives, when you come along and see this, it doesn't necessarily look that great. And I remember when I first came to Nicaragua, now this is a really good one. And oh, there's one that's available, it looks like. And this type of stuff looked very different to, to my North American uh, context, but now, having lived in, in Nicaragua, knowing how communities build buildings and what the challenges are and how things are done, uh, this style of little businesses along the road and how nicely these are done and the variety of things. We have a little libraria that's the like school supply store, which makes sense right across from a school. And then a little pharmacy, again, tons of tiny pharmacies that just have little things. You'd go to the big one that we just passed for, for major things. As we're coming by, this is the the technical center and a basketball court over there. They advertise that building in the back all over the city on billboards and no one ever knows where it is. And I've seen this listed as the Barrio Utrecht uh, when that's being shown. But I don't believe that's actually correct, but that's what the city puts on some of the billboards. So we may be in Utrecht, but nothing has that labeled on a map. So. I'm just going by a city-made billboard somewhere near uh, Leona. Okay, so anyway, these little, these little shops along the road with this great variety and activity where they have like interesting things for sale, like, like food you'd actually wanna buy. There's a veterinarian right there, a little tiny veterinary, but that's super useful. Um, and little tiny eateries, now it's dropping off here, but that is the, that is the hub of a community right there. That is, you can go out and hang out. You can go out and do things. You can do basic shopping, all your day-to-day -day stuff. You just go from shop to shop and you can do it on foot. You can do it on bicycle. That is really easy to deal with. I want to walk up here a little bit and see this building because I've never managed to get close to it before. Now look at the quality of the construction along here. Like these are fancy, fancy fences and walls, nice sidewalks. I'm not walking on the sidewalk because I want a little bit of distance from the building to, to film it. But this is a beautiful complex here. It's a really nice basketball court. So this is the Centro Tecnologia 
Juan de Dios Muñoz Reyes Leon. Part of Enatech. I'm gonna walk up here. Actually, I'm gonna cross the street so we can actually get a little, well. But this is a really gorgeous complex that at least on a Monday morning shows no signs of life. There are a number of cars and that's as Edificio C. Uh, so there's multiple buildings and they're pretty big. And from what I've seen on, on billboards, there's like a big atrium and stuff in there too. Now I have no idea who uses it, what it's used for, whether it's heavily in use, but it is a beautiful complex. And stuff like this is so important for communities like this, that there's something big and gorgeous and safe and anchoring in the middle that uh, really helps give the community uh, a certain vibe and, and protection. When a community completely develops on its own, you have certain struggles with, uh, uh, the, you know, because there's no zoning, because things can happen organically, suddenly a spot that is potentially problematic is very difficult to correct. Uh, for all we know, this was an area that was probably empty, but it could have been an area that had a lot of problems for some reason, and they decided to put in something that would guarantee that it was safe and well lit and, and provides a, uh, income for the region. And so it creates jobs and gives kids a place to go or whatever. Those things really do make a difference when you've got bad areas, if nothing else, put in a park, but you got to maintain the parks. That's the, that's the challenge. There's always cost to that. Hopefully our bloom is not too bad. It's a bright day. I apologize. But this is a pretty cool walk. We're seeing a lot of stuff. It's nice to be in a new area. All right, on the left, the Agricultural Cooperative. <laughs> okay, so hope you guys can see it. The road across the street, I wouldn't drive on. Um, there is no vehicle that's going to make that. That is crazy. All right, we've gone just a little ways, about one block. We're back to some, some food on the street again. And a pulperia with a little eatery on the left. Our little spot to eat. I don't know if it's an eatery. Might be pushing the point. This is closed at the moment, but this is an asada restaurant. Hola. <laughs> She's probably there opening it. We got a little tiny market here on the left. This is a little place that does lunch, but not open yet. Remember, I'm here pretty early in the day. And then, okay, so I want to point out behind these shops is another park. I don't know anything about this park. I don't know its name, but I have seen it when I was driving through here. I'm hoping I can find a way to get back to it without a problem. I mean, I could cut through right here, obviously. Oh, here we go. So this is, in the middle of these shops, a bus stop. So obviously just the city bus stop, right? And then there's one across the road. So depending on the direction you're going, catch one or the other. Duh. Anyway, so we have these nice bus stops in the middle of a nice little shop. Like if you need a few little things as you get home, that's kind of nice. But here, we actually have a nice little open park area right in the middle of all this. And then there's these kind of dense residential areas around this. Now, obviously, not much is being done with this park at the moment. But let's take a little look and actually dig into this. So, you know, so often what we're looking at in Nicaragua is either, uh, in some sad cases, what used to be. Um, and has not yet returned or may never. But in many cases, what we're looking at is things that are coming or things that have potential. Uh, and sometimes just things we don't understand. But this is an area that I think is pretty new. These look like new, uh, and I don't know how these are meant to be used, but new kind of shelter things that have been put up. We have these shrubbery, the shrubbery that is clearly being maintained in the middle. These are new plants all around. I think this is a current effort 
to, to, to do things. And I bet we have working, yes. So you can come out here and get water, which is a big deal in parks. All over the world, one of the things I always look for, do the parks have water? It's really nice to be able to wash your hands, wash your face, get a drink, refill your bottle, whatever, when you're out. And oh, you can see there's water at the ground too for watering the plants. And so then these, you can tell they're not new, new, but they're not old. These are little restaurant shops. So these are meant to be tiny little street food type vendors. And it's a common thing you see all over Nicaragua that they do those. So there's one on either side. Obviously, you can't need much here. We've got this big, beautiful paved area in the middle. Like you could put on events and you've got this stage so you can put in concerts here or, you know, any type of community event or someone standing up and speaking and you have the sides with some shelter. That would be nice if there was a shelter up above this. And uh, I'm sure that was in the plans. And then that looks like, I'm guessing, the bathroom's there. And uh, what a beautiful thing to have in the middle of the community. And then there's a cute little doggy over there. Hello, doggy. Just looking at us. Uh, and then that's the main road up there. And the front is all lined with shops with a pass through at the bus station. So while this is obviously super quiet. Oh, there's another water right there as well. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, while this is super quiet and just people passing through it to walk from one place to another. This is a beautiful little bit in the middle of the community, and it would take so little for this to turn into something so nice. If you were putting on like live music or some kind of show, uh, then these places could open up and, uh, you know, they're going to sell a lot, but they could sell snacks of some sort, something interesting, drinks, you know, and uh, what a fun little thing. And then this is like, I'm going to guess a parking lot area with another cute dog. What is this? All right, I'm going to bop up there. I'm going to turn off the camera for just, well, no. Look at this. Look at this view through here. Those are some beautiful fields just off in the distance as we walk up to walk up to these shops. All right. I'm just going to pass through over here. I think this is where I came in. So we can go show that to you. Clean city for a better life. For those who think or, you know, are hoping that Leon is going to take a focus on trash and litter and that stuff. It's, they're starting to paint it on things. It's a message they're trying to get out. So this is a beautiful field. We're looking south, almost exactly south. And uh, obviously the city drops off pretty quickly from this area. But, uh, you know, if you were, if you were looking, okay, so I don't know how old this is. But this is worth noting. This is the Via San Luis Latificación. So this is a housing development that they are starting here. And uh, this is like the entrance, apparently. Now, there's tons of these. Loads of them go out of business. And it's just a pipe dream that someone had. So don't get too excited that you see that and are like, well, I'm just going to buy a lot in there and have a house. There's zero houses, right? There's no road. There's no nothing. So don't, don't look at this and be like, wow, I'm just going to do that. That's amazing. Um, and it's got, you know, telephone numbers and it says reserve your lot today or already. And, uh, but it doesn't have a WhatsApp. It has old numbers. So that suggests it's quite an old sign because it has two numbers back from when you had to have two numbers, depending on if you're a Tigo or a Claro. And uh, so even though the sign doesn't look too ancient, I'm pretty sure it is a really old sign. But, but my point was, you can imagine any number of places in this part of the city you could buy a spot back behind the houses or along one of the other roads and either be on the backside and have this wide open view of beautiful fields. You can kind of see a little bit of low high, light, lying hills in the background um, and be relatively close to this kind of dense part of the city that does have, you know, small shops and stuff. And uh, it's not too hard to imagine this being a decent place to live. You can see off to the left going into the city there. And uh, 
and a cute little houses over here. But uh, that would also be if they were doing a lotification over here, uh, a housing development. That's not super surprising because you can see the, the view. You could easily have a gorgeous, gorgeous community back there, but you need someone to actually invest in it and a bunch of people to actually buy lots or else it's just wasted land that's never going to go anywhere and you risk and it's by risk, I don't mean like, well, it could happen. I mean, no, it's basically a guarantee that no one else will ever buy. You'll never have water supply. You'll never have sewer supply. Most people who go into those kinds of things in the first one or two or even five houses often end up incredibly sad and struggling as they are stuck paying homeowners fees and all kinds of fines for their entire community because they're the only ones and they bear all the cost of everything. Got a business back there. Can't really see what it is. There's a lot of stuff going on though. What is this? Got some bigger houses back there. Okay, we have a giant lion statue over here on the right. Now over here on the left, going into these neighborhoods are kind of rough roads. Uh, so what there is, because I've been back there, I think I'll cross at the next one, is there is a park barrier. I don't know if park's the right word, but there's a greenery barrier against the road. So the road I'm on has sidewalks on both sides. So first of all, sidewalks on both sides that are even, this entire part of the city, I hadn't really paid attention to this until just a second, has good sidewalks. These are flat, well-maintained, good shape, and it's both sides of the road. They're pretty wide. They go everywhere. Now, this really, really narrow thing going back, um, that's like a bike path, but it says lots for sale on that sign. So what kind of lots, what there is, I don't know. And there's an old weird building right there at the front. But so there's multiple places claiming to sell lots. That is a really interesting walking path there. Like, where does that go and why? Now there's a Quinta here on the corner, the Quinta Gladys. It's hard to imagine something quite this much in the city being called a Quinta, especially when it looks like it's industrial back behind. Maybe it was a Quinta long ago and they kept the name. I don't know. Uh, but so there's this greenway on the left. So we have these great sidewalks on this road. Then this greenway, which is not very deep. It's like, I don't know, a quarter of a, a lot, a half a lot at most. Um, but it separates this busy road. We're going to go around the bus from the residencias. And uh, this is one of the buses sitting at the bus stop. Oh, they had a problem. Oh, here's the stuff at Quinta Gladys, you can see. And, uh, and then this, probably a house, but could be a shop. Who knows? Got a couple shops up there in front of us. And then we open up a little bit on the right here. You can see there's not a lot of construction back there. The city kind of ends this far out to the, to the south is kind of over. Most everything is this way. So we're gonna cross over now and show you what I mean. I'm just gonna show back. There is a few shops over there. That is a construction shop like uh, tiles and paints, that kind of stuff for building houses. And notice even here, where it's completely unnecessary, there's a perfectly decent sidewalk. Yeah, a broom would be nice, but that's all it needs uh, through this park-ish area, all right? But this runs a really long way through this neighborhood. And now this, there was a beautiful sign that welcomed you to the neighborhood with beautiful tile. It explained the name of it and all kinds of stuff. And it had a map and it's not there anymore. And there's a very sad playground remains and a kid sitting on top of the slide. Uh-huh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> So you can see that this was meant to be something really nice once upon a time. A beautiful park area, a gorgeous sign. That is a fountain on the back side of it, by the way. I think. It may have been like a garden thing. Maybe it's just for plants. But there's like a thing. And then this region all throughout. We're going to walk into it. So then this is the actual road that everything fronts against. So this is a really nice design that keeps the noise down, the dust down, and gives a little bit of privacy to this residencia 
So as we walk into the Residencia, this is not completely dissimilar to what we've seen in other areas around the country with very similar homes. And it's a small starter home community for families going out on their own. A lot of people who work at the plant. One of these. We have some cute side streets, but a lot of the roads are not very well maintained. And that makes it tough. They're very narrow. Uh, there's not a lot here. Basically, everybody would walk out to the main road for utilities and such. But it is a very, what is this? Accessible and affordable area. So for people who need to get into their own house and need to be in the city for work, typically, this area would be pretty inviting that the houses are relatively modern, uh, efficient. So notice these are all cookie cutter, right? Same style, different paint, over and over, a little bit of different touches, much like we would find in Castle Leon, a little bit smaller. And uh, and obviously this is wide open. You got a pulperia right there with a bunch of stuff. You can see this is a fairly large community. This goes on for many streets in every direction. What is this? but it's a perfectly nice area. But if you need a lot of space, if you had a car, this is the biggest challenge I think in this area. It's far enough out that a lot of times you'd want to own a car here, but it's a terrible own area to own a car in. So that's kind of the, the mix. But if you're happy riding the bus, it has bus stops just right behind us. So very, very easy to take public transportation from this area. So if you're, if you were looking for a small house and especially like these, like the gated, like the, yeah, gated ones or however you fenced ones here, right? If you just need like a small one bedroom and you don't need anything fancy and you just want to be able to take the bus, it would be very easy to get into one of these and uh, have a nice little quiet spot in an area no one would suspect. <laughs> My camera overheated, so I need to do really quick little bits as it cools down to try to show you some stuff. But I came from way down there. I just walked one block north since it shut off. But I wanted to show you, this is in the middle actually of this Rapardo. We're not on the edge of it. I mean, to the south we were when I showed that, but we're not on the north edge. But like, there's some cool construction out here. Like this is a really nice house out here. It's a decent size. It has beautiful outdoor uh, uh, touches. It has a little garden and they have a garden on the side and some decent houses next to it. So, and we're on a very dirt little nothing road. But, uh, uh, and in the distance you can see the smoke rising. That's actually the fumigation teams and you can hear them. There's one back there, you can see the smoke rising there. And I just walked past one. If you watch the shorts, I should have posted it. Someone fumigating. So it's a fumigation morning here to stop the mosquitoes. And so there's teams all over the Reparto. But this is an area where people are currently building houses and putting in new stuff. And, and there's some pretty decent stuff coming in. Uh, it's just mixed in with things and in a spot where the development's kind of slow. Other than this uh, construction equipment, in the middle of the city to have a road that is this quiet. Okay, it's loud because of the diesel engine of the, of the front loader, but ignore that. Look at what a peaceful little road this is in the middle of the city. They're going to run me over. I have to walk pretty fast. I am in the way, but there's just these scattering of houses through here. And there's a really quiet road, but it connects and we'll be right back to the park where we started and all those shops like really quickly. All right, here I can get out of the way. But this is a, this is a pretty wild area. It's really hard to explain. All right, there's some more of that really quiet road, a little bit of fumigation dust, and then these are the tiniest little houses. So tiny. This is like the house equivalent of a studio, but obviously that has a role to play, right? If you want a really tiny spot, but you want your own private spot, hey, you know, houses like this, that is a one bed, one bath, kitchenette, itty bitty little thing, but, if you want a place, you can open up the windows and have the breeze take all the air away in a few seconds. Have only one fan. You just don't need a lot of space. You know, 
retirees who want just something simple. You don't want to have to clean things. You don't want to entertain people. Or if you do, you just want to be outside. You know, a lot of people were like, well, I would just want a studio apartment or a one bedroom apartment. But we, and I'm not saying they don't exist, but they're super rare. That's a nice place right there. But a little tiny place like this, easily, I'm going to say my expectation is sub $15,000 land, construction, everything, complete in 15K, 16K in a development for a slightly larger place. So it could be 14K out here and really easy to maintain, really low cost, cute little area. Yeah, there's some trash problems. Yeah, there's some dust. It's not perfect, but for someone on a really tight budget, but once the privacy of owning their own place, the, the security of owning a house, the comfort of owning a house and having a yard around it one of these got some new house maintenance or construction right there as an example this is and then uh just kind of point out we got the church for family church the way right there el camino the way and uh uh and if you wanted to have an air conditioned space but were worried about cost a tiny little house like these all concrete that you can just close up one little air, well, one good size air conditioning unit, uh, wall unit, and you're good to go. That's the whole thing. You don't need anything else. All right, I'm standing one crossroad to the south. So we're looking east. You can see the fumigators way down at the end. I'm sure they're absolutely tiny. So I wanted to show some of what this street looks like, much like the last one, but a little bit more developed. You've got a cute little house with a little frontage there. This one has a little garden on the side. This is a very typical Central American garden, just barbed wire. You got your little space. It's cute, uh, but not like a big fence. Like that's very inexpensive, right? And, and having these nice trees actually act as the barbed wire holders, it's actually pretty attractive. It's quite cute. And then here you can see you've got a bigger house down there. These roads are pretty rough. Obviously, you can see the water flowing down it. And then this cute one here, this is kind of barrio fancy going on. You can see what the traffic looks like here. We're working our way south. As I head back to the road that uh, we came in on, uh, there's a dog sleeping in the yard there. This is a pickup truck doing a delivery of, of uh, mattresses. So we're gonna continue on to the south, to the left here, and uh, head back to where we came from. All right, as we head south, we've got uh, some seriously cute places here on the left. Check out this yellow one. That is a neat style. These fences, full second story, not super common out here. As with everywhere in Nicaragua, you have every level of construction and house and business all in one space. You just never know what you're going to find. Look at the size of that house. It's not super wide, but it's really deep, double story the whole way. That's a garage in the far back. But that is a ton of space. You could easily have a six bedroom there in that space. And the whole garden is, is fenced on the bottom floor and the balcony above. What is this? Yeah. Then we got well-maintained places over here. Cute little pulperia. And then we are back to the other side. So we walked and saw the east side of the Centro Tecnologico. This is the west side of it. So here we've walked quite a bit and uh, we're going to stop by and get some shots of that. But you can see, and it's interesting how you're coming through the barrio and it's rough streets and everything. And then suddenly you come on this amazing structure in the middle of it. And I really got to get some information about this place. I'm going to work on that. But look at the street that leads up to it, right? So that's just a dirt path, a lot of greenery. That is where we just came from to the north. And then we look east along this unbelievable structure. And now you can see why there's multiple buildings. Like there's clearly multiple buildings. There's a parking spot that they point to. That's where we walked by earlier. This is Edificio Bay. So this is the second building that we're standing at right now. I'm assuming that the First building is kind of in front in the middle. I don't, there's nothing really, oh, oh, yes. This is a university or a major high school type thing, but it is part of the national education system. So this is a, 
And look at those crossways in the air, the skyways. Like this is a really cool complex. Just want to get a quick shot of it a little bit better. Don't don't know that we're really supposed to be in here, but I'm just going to poke my head in and put the camera in for a second. Let people see. There are people in there. There's a lot of voices. I can see some people walking around. Hola. Yep, security guard is just over to the side. Just wanted to get a look at what it is. Oh, yeah, big look at this huge thing for hanging bicycles. Very cool. What a neat. I can only imagine that it's like a high school thing, like major uh, part of the, like if you're in a, hola, very specialized technical field programs in high school. So where I grew up, this is the, I, I can hear the people in there. This is a regular uh, elementary school, I assume, over here, maybe a preschool. Oh, no, no, no. This is the Institute of Natural Medicine. Oh my gosh. Well, that's interesting. Who would have guessed that that would be here? It has the look of being an official thing, not like just someone's business, but I think that's actually the Government Institute of National Medicine. I'll have to ask about that as well. That's what the look gives me. And then this is a regular school here that we're saying, and we saw this earlier. We pointed this out as we went by. But so I grew up in, in New York, and in New York, we had our regular high schools, and then we had these technical schools, te technical centers like this, that were not nearly as nice as this. Holy cow, not even close. Uh, but it was called BOCES, the Board of Cooperative Education Services. And the main programs that were hard for individual schools to give, whether it required a lot of equipment or specialty teachers, would all be done through that. And if all the schools in the region would bus people to that in the morning, you'd go to your high school, and then they'd ship you by bus to there for your specialty classes. And it was a Really cool program. Uh, so that's the vibe it gives me, but I certainly don't know. Okay, actually this sign tells us a lot. That is complete your goals or achieve your goals. Com complete is really complete, but it would be used like achieve your goals, choose a technical career, and it shows agriculture and husbandry and um, uh, hospitality. So that's what it is. And it shows, so this is this facility here. There's another one, uh, the Arlen Siu facility at El Sauce. And then there's apparently another one in Leon, but I don't know where that is, but now I know that it exists. So we'll have to pay attention and see if we can figure out where that is. Uh, from what I can tell, that includes adult studies, but I'm going to have to ask and get some information about it. But that uh, gives us a little bit uh, of filling in what it is. But a lot of those things, that's exactly what BOCES is like uh, back home, is uh, a lot of those specialty fields so that you don't have to go on to a separate university for more general studies. You're able to do something that, that prepares you for a very specific field. Uh, and I know working in hospitality here in Nicaragua that there are programs, a lot of programs around hospitality jobs. That's managing hotels, uh, running restaurants, that kind of stuff. They do a ton of training at the national level for that to make sure that there is a supply of people uh, who have those skills because uh, obviously it's it's difficult for people to pave their own way for careers that don't necessarily have really high incomes but are very important uh, to have those jobs able to be filled. All right, we're coming back. We're nearly to the, uh, the, the Saba Pharmacy and the Super Express. So we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good walk through of this little community here on the east side of Leon. Okay, I had to wait for some traffic because it got really loud. So that is the pharmacy and Super Express down there. I want to point out a bunch more shops. There's way more shops than we walked past before. So here, this is a, a cheese store on the corner. Got another Libraria here. Now we've got a tiny supermarket. This is a independent super mini, a Miranda. And then another pharmacy here, but a pretty decent one, bigger than like the little neighborhood pharmacies often are and then what looks like a little eatery or something that might be the pharmacy it's hard to tell exactly which is which no that's the pharmacy and then another little business right here there is so much going on in this neighborhood it's all tiny stuff you know there's not a lot of big fancy things but there is a surprising amount of life going on now here's another food shop and something on the at least the end is for sale maybe the whole thing now this place is a bakery right here you can see in there for just a little bit they don't have a ton of bread but they got a number of different bread options right there right in the middle of the neighborhood always awesome now open field here on the left over here we have an ice cream and cake store this is a video game salon so this is a gaming center 
right? So you can come here and buy and play games, which a lot of people are like, there should be places for video games. There actually are all over the place. Then a pulperia and another pharmacy. A lot of times the pharmacies have different things. So you learn which ones has the things you need. Open a lot right there. And then on the right, we have something big that's all fenced off. No idea what it is, but it has an awful lot of Nicaraguan flags in there. So probably like a school or something. And there used to be a sign on the space on the left, but it's all faded into nothing. There are some people in there with a look of students about them. I think we've got a sign here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, this is a giant facility that goes so far back in there. Holy cow. All right, what do we got? Found, founded 2007, the Colegio Cristiano in Nicaragua, Incorporated Leon. All right, so this is a high school, a really, really, really big high school. That's pretty cool. And uh, that's a small church on the rise right there. And then some houses. And then uh, I think this is a car wash up here on the left. All right, so we still have the high school. You can see how far it goes. We're going to cut the camera for a minute so we cool down and be able to show you a little bit more. Still walking west towards the city. Mostly pointing this out for Alan, but that guy sells Dos Pinos ice cream. Whole bunch more shops here. Now, this is the park right there. That's where we started. So we're actually west of the park, and I'm walking past this really big complex that we noted at the beginning. It's beautiful. It has a beautiful fence. It has good gardening inside. The front of it is all nicely maintained. Like, clearly, this is a nice thing. But there's no sign that I can find on it to tell us what it is. Now, maybe a map will tell me, but it's just got a big gate. It's got a guard. I did see a car go in, but nothing that says what it is. So neat and all, but uh, I don't know what to tell you. There's a big sign here that says the Naturista Vida Sana. So just down there where those that taxi's going past that guy, is a shop called the Vita Sana. It is a natural health store. I just happened to have seen it earlier. And so I uh, just noticed that the sign says they've been here for 30 years. So that's cool. Good to know. All right, that is our walk for the day. I am super sweaty from being out in the sun, but thanks for joining us, guys. This was a great exploration. Get down in those comments. Let me know what you think about this area, these walks, what you wanna see. I'm, my foot is hurting a little bit. Not bad, not bad, it's okay, but a little bit much. Uh, but uh, we're back at this beautiful garden. I'm pretty sure that guy actually works in the garden and maintains it because he has not moved. And the way that he kind of watched me when I was here gave me that vibe. Uh, <laughs> there's the natural store right there through the trees. But uh, if you would be so kind as to like, and if you've not subscribed, please do. It really does help at least with the impressions to people of how well the channel is doing. And uh, as always, if you want to support the channel, we've got the Buy Me A Coffee link up above, buymeacoffee.com slash Miller, And we do have membership for people who want to make a small monthly contribution and help keep the channel going on a regular basis. As always, thank you so much. And I will see all of you from beautiful, very warm Leon, Nicaragua tomorrow. Stick with us for 13 additional minutes of driving through the city of Leon, including some very interesting market navigation. Thank you so much for your support for our channel.